You see, when uh, you have guilty feeling, what is the cause of these feelings? You know, very often people get attached to the cause of it. You know, because when you do something right, you feel certain gratitude towards life. You know? But when you do something wrong, what is reproaching you? It is your inner self, you know? because you know what is right and what is wrong. Nobody have have to come to you and said, "Oh, you have done something wrong." You know it because you have that guilt feeling inside of you. And your guilt feeling will not let you at peace until that is resolved. Because it's not from the outside again. Again it is back to your own heart saying, "Ah, you have done something wrong." And you know it is wrong. But yet because you have not come because of the ego personality you have not come to the point of saying yeah i have done something wrong how many people would say yes i have done something wrong nobody will say that i have done something wrong nobody will admit that yes i have done something wrong everybody like to put the fault on somebody else because it's much easy you know you take your garbage and dump it on somebody else it is not your business anymore how many time in your life you have done that Do you think that guilt feeling will disappear? No, it is always there. Deep inside, it will amplify the self, it will come back again. Every time you do something, again it will come back. Yes, I have done something wrong. And you know it. Thousand people will tell you no, it's fine, it's fine, but yet you know in deep inside of you, I am doing something wrong, but yet you will do it again and again. Because you have accustomed yourself in lying towards yourself. You know, so your lie has become so real that you start to believe your own lie. The same people have told you, you know, from childhood itself. No, you, it's not right to do like this. It's not right to do like that. It's not right. You want to express yourself. You want to be yourself, but yet you have been told no, 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 no. So you have been layers and layers, and layers and layers of cover, which you can't even breathe. I say you can't be yourself because by being yourself you will be scared of society you will be scared of what people will think about you how many times nowadays you can say how many people say yes i am living my life hmm when i was i wanted to be somebody but yet my parent have told me no i can't be that you know my friend have told me no i can't be that Elk why that have told me no you have to study you have to become somebody you have to have a certain title in life you know you have to earn you have to work you have to be like how many parents do that with their children eh huh? does not all the parents do that with their children can your children come and tell you no i want to be different from what you want would you agree with that No you will never agree because you have a set rules what you have put inside your parents have put inside of you your parents parents have done the same thing and you are playing the same game There is no mother who will come tomorrow and say yes my child you want to live for God go and live for God I'm supporting you Who will tell that No you will have first the idea oh my goodness my poor child you are letting go of everything what kind of life would you ruin your life eh that will bring a lot of guilt inside thanks god in history there was mothers who stand for that and bring their children into that there is a beautiful story of a uh, king gopichand no you know the story of king gopichand anybody knows He was from the Nath Sampradaya, one of the uh, great founder of the Nath Sampradaya. He was a great ruler. Very young age, his father passed away, and he became a very great ruler. And he was—he had everything. So he enjoyed his life. He had three wives. You know, and uh, he was happy. he had many children he had palaces they have wonderful life so one day but he had he loved his wife and he loved his mother so dearly his his was his mother was a, a widow 
Maya Mavati was her name. So one day she was sitting on the balcony. As she was sitting on the balcony, she saw her son taking bath with his free wife and engage in all sensual activities. So seeing that, she was crying. So the tears dropped on the back of the king. So when the hot tears fell on the on his back, he looked up and he saw his mother crying. And he said to the mother, "Mother, he starts shouting, "Who have hurt you? And oh, please tell me, I will fight, I will kill that person who have hurt you, who have made you cry." So the mother didn't say anything. Kept quiet. When the sun was calm, Gopi Chan was calm. The mother said, "My dear child, I want to tell you something. I'm telling you, but I was crying looking at you. It remind me of your father. It remind me." how your father was young beautiful and he have a lovely wife and he also was enjoying himself very much but it all finished from one day to the other he was just a pile of ash in front of me what have he achieved nothing so my son when i'm looking at you i see the same i see the same quality but have you ask yourself what have you achieved truly in life what have you achieved spiritually but you can say yes i have lived life fully i see the same So the king Gopichand held the mother's feet and said, "Please, mother, tell me what to do." And uh, he said, "She said, 'My son, leave everything and depart to the forests, and never come back until you have attained to what you have come here. Then you can come back." So the king took the word of the mother so strongly and left everything and went to the forest. So here in the forest he met his guru and under the direction of the guru the guru told him because he see the vanity you know when somebody have everything there is also that vanity inside of oneself you know he was a king you know he had everything so he wanted to test him he said listen my dear child put off this gown put a mendicant robe and go begging in your uh, kingdom so he went he took the begging bowl and he went begging And when he went begging he was going from door to door but everybody who saw him they recognized his the king and of course they gave happily so finally he went to his uh, queen when the queen saw the king they said what the use of all the jewelry seeing you in that state you know so they remove all the jewelry and put it in the begging bowl so the king turned to one of the assist not assistant but one of the monk and said please take this to the ashram that what they having here so finally he went to his mother maya mavati knock at the door the mother opened and the mother greet him by yogi he said she said to him you my dear yogi 
you have come to beg at the household house what can I give you I don't have anything to give you what is dear to a yogi like you you know so the mother said ah, but I will have to give you something I have just free advice to give you the first advice the first thing I, I, I advise you is sleep well and well uh, they protected in a well uh, in a fort sleep well in a, in a how say well protected fort second sleep on a bed which is very soft and third he said eat the most delicious nicest food you have, you have he was very confused he said that is a free advice i have and he said but mother how is that possible <laughs> i am in the forest what are you talking about the fort how can i sleep on in in the in the hase Uh, how can I be protected in a fort there is no fort in the forest there is no palace in the forest you tell me to sleep on a bed but there we sleep on the floor in the ashram you sleep on the floor not on the bed and food whatever is given to me that's what I have to eat so then he said to the mother well if it was another woman telling these words i will think that she's crazy but knowing you i know that there is a deeper meaning behind that can you please explain that to me then uh, he said to she said to him my dear child when i tell you to sleep on a fort that is to protect you no one thing but you are handsome you are young and many women will come many people will come to listen to you young and all will come and try to be near you but you have to protect yourself and by protecting yourself means to be under the protection of the guru constantly seek assistance of the guru be in the company of the guru that will protect you and listen to the satsang of the guru that will protect you from everything else when you have the deeper understanding and the deeper meaning of that that will protect you that is the fort sleeping on the bed meaning stay awake do your sadhana you know do your sadhana get to the point but you can't stay awake but when you fell asleep on the hardness of the uh, of, of the of the floor of the soil or, you know in the forest it will feel like velvet itself you know you can see when you are tired you can just sleep anywhere you don't bother you whether it is on a hard surface or on a soft surface you will just sleep so come to that point where nothing bother you it's not the softness of the bed it's like go away from that notion but everything you can you can sleep when you're tired you can sleep anywhere and eat which means appreciate and that appreciation you know what uh, you receive just be happy that you have something to eat and eat it and be grateful about that so that what that mother gave to to her son yeah. and that what uh, 
actually parents should encourage their children, you know, to do their true dharma. The problem is that parents themselves doesn't have that knowledge of dharma. How would they put that into their children? Yeah? First, the parents themselves have to have that knowledge. Yeah? So the same thing, you see, you were talking about guiltiness. Yeah? When you are doing your dharma, you know, when you know for sure what you are doing, guiltiness will not awake. Because there is unsureness inside of you. you know, there is this uh, uncertainty. You do everything with uncertainty. Automatically, you will feel guilty. Because that is not in tune to what truly your life purpose is. You know. 